You want me to put that on my todger? Harry's wife. I know of him. Improbably named plastic face Lieutenant Omid Scobie is apparently a journalist, and I use that term when applying to him in its most elastic sense. He is, of course, the author of the piece of excrement that is Finding Freedom, or as it's more commonly known, Funding Freedom, Finding Dollars. If you'd like to be entertained by my alternative version of that publication, you can go to the Knowledge Vault and treat yourself to a series of videos where I read it but take it apart. You'll laugh so much, you'll probably prolapse. Scobie is a lieutenant to Harry's wife, and therefore he has been instrumental in the pushing of propaganda on her behalf. We all know that Finding Freedom was basically Harry's wife's diaries. The level of detail that was contained in it could only have come from her. It was preposterous to suggest that she had no involvement in it. And indeed, Harry will also have had regular involvement with the improbably named Plastic Faced One. However, Scobie, Klingon that he is, the unflushable turd that he often appears to be, has found himself being mentioned in recent court action. Of course, he was caught out and was found to have perjured himself, or at least it was alleged that he perjured himself in relation to Harry's wife's action against Associated Newspapers Limited, the owner of the Mail Online, previously. This time, an article by Mark Duell and Rory Tingle, what a great name that is, Rory Tingle, that appears in Mail Online, tells us Prince Harry tells hacking trial he knows of Omid Scobie. Prince Harry today told his High Court hacking case that he knows of journalist Omid Scobie, who wrote his unofficial biography and has been posting photographs of a trip to California where the Duke and his family live. The Duke of Sussex is suing Mirror Group newspapers for damages, claiming journalists that its titles, which include the Daily and Sunday Mirror and Sunday People, use methods including phone hacking, so-called blagging or gaining information by deception, and private investigators for unlawful activities. On the second day of Harry's evidence, which saw him become the first senior royal in more than a century to testify in court, he was asked about Mr Scobie. Mr. Scobie co-authored the 2020 book, Finding Freedom, although, of course, his co-author, Carolyn Durant, has never been heard of again, such as her level of embarrassment at having been involved in such a piece of shit. And his wife, Harry's wife, is thought to be close to the Sussexes. However, it is not known if he has visited the couple who live in a £12 million mansion in Monty Shitshow. At the High Court, Mr Scobie, who is Bazaar.com's royal editor at large, was mentioned by MGN's barrister, Andrew Green, KC, in his cross-examination of Harry. Mr Green quoted how Mr Scobie had previously spoken about the importance of sources in royal reporting. The barrister then asked, Do you know Mr Omid Scobie? The Duke replied, Yes. There probably then was the burst of an instruction in his ear from Monty Shitshow, as Harry then clarified, I know of him. While Mr Green did not give the source of Mr Scobie's comments, an article in the I newspaper in August 2020 quoted him as saying, Royal and celebrity news thrives on the anonymity of sources. Mr Scobie and Finding Freedom co-author, now in hiding Carolyn Durant, spoke to more than 100 sources including close friends of Harry and Harry's wife, royal aides and palace staff, past and present for their book, according to a note in it. And of course, pausing there, that once again demonstrates the hypocrisy of Harry and Harry's wife in that they are perfectly content for a publication to be put forward when it praises them and basically sticks a tongue right up their yitter, relying, of course, on anonymous sources and 
that their information might have been obtained in ways which could have been nefarious. But of course, when it's saying things which are perceived and remember the perception of Harry's wife is all important here as a criticism, all of a sudden, it's abuse, it's intrusive, it's hate. Mr. Scobie is thought to have been in California and posted photographs of a trip there on his Instagram account two days ago. The journalist previously claimed that he was shown how to hack voicemails while on work experience at MGN title The Sunday People. Mr. Scobie also previously said that while on work experience at its sister paper The Daily Mirror, he overheard the then-editor Piers Morgan being told that information for a story about pop star Kylie Minogue had come from voicemail. Mr. Scobie also insisted that he is not the Sussex's friend, mouthpiece cheerleader, and then shortly after that went on to put things on Twitter, demonstrating that he is their friend, mouthpiece and cheerleader, another hypocrite in the Sussex stable. Mr. Morgan, editor of the tabloid between 1995 and 2004, has denied any involvement in the phone hacking. A profile in the Sunday Times last month claimed Mr. Scobie met Harry's wife in 2015 at Toronto Fashion Week before she started dating Harry. It also claimed to it also said he claimed to have given Harry's wife a big farewell hug beneath the candelabras of the 1844 room in Buckingham Palace after her final engagement as a working royal. Clearly, he isn't a friend or mouthpiece of the Sussexes, or a cheerleader for them. Although, of course, he's another one whereby his actions certainly demonstrate that he is. Naturally, for Harry to say that he knows of Omid Scobie demonstrates the contempt for which the Sussexes actually have for him, that he's little lapdog that runs around being their friend, cheerleader, and mouthpiece. It once again demonstrates the world within the Sussexes where hypocrisy is rampant, all generated, of course, from the behaviour of Harry's wife because of her narcissism, causing her to say one thing and then do another, and not see any problem with that because her narcissism blinds her from it. She's not allowed to see it. The narcissism is that hermetically sealed defence mechanism. But it draws in people like the improbably named plastic face Lieutenant Omid Scobie because he sees an advantage of being around Harry's wife to further his own agenda, which is essentially the only people that can actually tolerate her. Those who are either so dim-witted but don't actually know her, but then accuse everybody else of not knowing her, a.k.a. the Sugars, and other people that do have some involvement with her, but they only do so because they're getting something out of them, out of her, to benefit them. She has no true or genuine friends because she's that utterly unlikable individual. People recognise that they only tolerate her and her behaviour because it suits them to do so, because she is a source of funding or a source of prominence for them also. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.